Next, attach a click event to the sign up button. Go to the sign up button element and before the closing angle bracket in the starting button tag, bind a click event to the button using b hyphen bind colon click equals add the callback function inside the double quotes. I'm going to call it sign up button pressed. Actually, there is a shortcut for binding a click event to a button. Instead of using v hyphen bind colon click, I can simply use at sign click, which will do the exact same thing, but looks much cleaner. Now let's go ahead and declare this function. In view two, all the functions must be declared inside the methods object. So after the data function, add comma, then methods colon, a pair of curly braces. In there, declare a sign up button pressed callback function. Like so, let's console log something so that we can see that the button is actually working. So I'm going to say sign up button is pressed. If you haven't already run the app, go to terminal menu at the top, new terminal. Then go to the project directory and run the npm run dev command, which will give you the URL. Go to the URL on the browser and make sure to go to the sign up route. Let's open up the browser console to see if the button press is working. Hit the sign up button. Oh wait, something has happened. Two things have happened. There is a question mark added to the URL as well as I don't see the console log message. Let me click the sign up button one more time to see what happens. Now I can see the sign up button pressed message in the developer console. But why it's not working the first time? Well, when I click the sign up button for the first time, it basically reloads the page and tries to submit the form data via get request. That's why we see the question mark in the URL. This is the default behavior of a form element when a button inside it is pressed. As you can see, even though I did not add the type attribute to the button element, the form can still be submitted. Also, you can see the console message is actually visible on the browser console for a second, then it quickly disappears as the page gets reloaded. Now we know the problem. There are two ways to prevent the default form submission. The first option is to call the prevent default method on the click event object. Let's see how to do that. To access the event object inside the sign up button pressed function, pass the parameter called event in between the parentheses. Now call the prevent default method on the event object. So event dot prevent default, opening closing parentheses and semicolon like so. Switch back to the browser and I can see the message on the console for the first time onwards when I click the sign up button. Perfect. Also, there is no question mark in the URL as well as the page does not get reloaded. Nice. Instead of using the prevent default function on the event object, I can simply add the prevent modifier to the click event using the dot notation. So after at click, add dot prevent. That's it. Now, I do not have to use the event prevent default method anymore. So I'm going to get rid of it as well as the event parameter that was passed into the sign up button pressed function. Nice. The second option is to attach on submit event to the form element 
rather than attaching a click event to the button inside. So get rid of the click event from the button in here. Go to the starting form tag and attach the submit event with the same callback function that I have used in the button below. So at submit equals sign up button pressed inside the double quotes like so. To stop the default submission, we can use either prevent default method on the event object or just use prevent modifier to the submit event similar like before. So dot prevent after submit like that. Let's try it on the browser and you can see it brings the exact same results like before back. Nice. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you can get more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.